Hello my friends and a very warm welcome uh, to my painting channel and a very warm welcome wherever you're watching from. Uh, in this video we're going to be painting a really gnarly looking ivy character. So these are the really grim nasty looking plants from the Resident Evil 2 board game. And we're going to start by painting all of the green, all of the base colour in the dark green grey colour from AK Interactive. So we're just going to cover all of the miniature in this colour. Um, and we're going to use this one as a really cool uh, base colour so that we can build up the colours and build up the tones from there. So we're just going to try to cover the whole model with this in a nice uh, sort of simple even thin coat. Um, and then we're going to build up from there. So this is nice and easy. You don't have to be uh, any kind of uh, careful or gentle with this. You can just cover the whole thing in this colour. And as you can see, this has this really cool matte sort of diluted green tone. And from there, we're going to start to build vibrancy up and get a really nice sort of uh, crazy vibrant sort of green tone and things like that. Now with this uh, video and this model, I'm going to show you just a few very, very, very basic sort of techniques of uh, little bits of wet blending and things. I did put a poll out the other day to see what kinds of techniques you'd like to see in uh, the future. So I've got a very basic sort of introduction, I guess, to um, wet blending in this one. And then I'll give you guys a proper video a little bit later on. So from there we're going to use one of my favourite colours which is Bloody Red. Uh, it's my favourite colour for multiple different reasons. Number one is it's a great name for a paint, uh, but number two it's also a really great vibrant um, looking red as well. It's a really good sort of bright uh, red that really really does stand out, especially against the green. So what we're going to do with this red, we're just going to paint the small little bits just either side on the shoulders and then we're also going to paint the big bulbs as well. We're also going to paint the inside of the mouth and I'll show you all of this in just a second. Now what I've done is I've added a small amount of water to this so you can see that although uh, the paint is taken to the model quite nicely it is also showing through a little bit of the sort of greenish colour from underneath as well. That means that we're not overtaking or taking over uh, all of this area in this red. It is having a really cool sort of effect where it, it's not sort of um, it, it's not too thick, it's not too extreme. So this is showing a little bit of that underneath colour as well, giving it a little bit of a two-tone effect. So I've just added uh, a little bit of water to this just to make this flow a little bit more even onto the model. Now in the mouth, as you can see, I'm only painting down to a certain point. So I'm painting probably about a third of the mouth here. And as you can see, I'm just trying to use uh, the, 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 the sort of tip of the brush just to keep a little bit of control. Although this is a base coat, I'm not going too extreme or too mad with this. From there then I'm going to use orange fire and bloody red and I'm going to use half and half, so equal parts of each. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of an older brush and I'm going to stipple and dab this colour just into the second half of the mouth. Again you can see that I've used a little bit of water so this is a nice thin down paint and that's given us that patchy sort of effect where the colour underneath is showing through as well. Now I'm applying this directly onto that red while the red is wet. This is where a small amount of that wet blending kind of technique is coming in. Because the colours are already wet and because the colours are quite thin, as these dry they're going to dry into each other so they're going to dry in a nice even blended tone without the need of dragging things through and using multiple layers and things like that. So this is a very quick simple way of getting those colours to sort of dry down in a really nice even way. I'm also then going to use the orange fire alone and again while the paints are wet I'm just going to apply this in patches as you can see just like so and again because the paints are already wet this is then going to blend into that paint as well. So this is going to dry into that paint creating this blend so we're going to get this red, red orange and then this also vibrant sort of bright orange kind of colour. Now I'm being very specific where I place this as well as you can see we're just placing this just around those edges. Um, of the um, of the mouth, so just the areas that are really folding around and coming out. So we don't want to paint this too deep into the inside because we want to create that illusion of shadow on the inside of the mouth, on the inside of that that sort of opening there. And I'm also doing the same thing on the bulbs, as you can see, just using a little bit of a stippling effect, adding some of this orange more towards the edge, more towards uh, the extreme edges. Now once everything has dried, I'm going to use soft tone just to cover the whole miniature. 
So I'm using this wash just to cover the whole miniature. Again, I've added water to this. So this is sort of half of the wash, half water. And the reason for that again is just because I don't want this to take over the miniature. I want this to sit in all of those little detailed recess points. As you can see, there's lots and lots and lots of detailed points on the model. And I want this to sit in those recess points, but I don't want it to take over the miniature and darken the miniature down too much. So by adding just a little bit of water, it allows this wash to flow a little bit more smoothly and just create a little bit more um, sort of control over where this wash sits. So it gives you the option and the control of being able to place this wash all over the model but without it darkening the model and things like that it just means that it sits in the recess point and that's the area that we're going to darken so you get complete control over it uh, by doing it this way also if you want to add more you can always add multiple layers as simple as that now from there we're going to paint a lot more of the green and we're going to use that dark green grey and then a dark green as well. So this is half and half, so this is 50% of each. And what we're going to do, you are more than welcome to dry brush this if you would prefer. Um, as you know on this channel we like to try to push ourselves a little bit and try to paint things a little bit more difficult just so that we level up our painting and we become a little bit more uh, sort of confident with our painting and that's what this is all about so I'm going to use my size zero brush and I'm going to use this 50-50 uh, split green tone that we've made and just using the very very tip of the brush as you can see I'm just going to gently start to pick out all of those raised areas all of those detailed points as I said you are more than welcome to dry brush this this will look equally cool if you dry brush it um, it's not a wrong option to do so it is just that we like to paint in different ways and we like to push and learn and try to develop our painting as we go so that's the reason why I'm going to hand paint all of these different um, vines and all of these different details and what we're going to do is by hand painting these we're going to slowly build these vib uh, this vibrancy up and we're going to slowly build where the uh, the sort of highlight colors and the vibrant colors are going to be so this is going to give us a little bit more uh, control as we go and also it's going to look really really uh, fantastic when it's finished as well something that you can again as i've said on the channel be very very proud of uh, when it's complete because it's going to give you that really really nice sort of complete look this really really lovely uh, tone so once that's done, we're just going to use the dark green on its own. And again, doing the same thing, I'm just going to slowly then start to build that vibrancy up. Now, being a little bit more careful about where I place this and choosing where to pick uh, areas that we want the vibrancy to be. So, as an example, I'm purposefully not going to paint underneath the, uh, the, the mouth, um, sort of uh, across the chest area and the stomach area of this creature because I want that area to stand out and be more dark. So we want certain areas to have a little bit more darkness to them and certain areas to have a little bit more vibrance and lightness to them. So as you can see, I'm focusing a lot more across the top of the area, at the, the top of the model. So we're trying to effect kind of where the lighting is we're trying to paint where we think the light is going to be and paint the more vibrant areas and paint the more highlighted areas towards the top of the model we're going to do the same thing across the legs so as you 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 sort of gather i'm going to paint across the knee and just across the leg areas but the underneath of the legs at uh, the inside i'm not going to paint those so they are going to stay darker so as we paint and as we slowly gradually progress with this vibrancy this vibrancy is going to have a really nice effect and nice tone further up but underneath is going to keep that shadow that dark green tone and it's going to allow us to create this nice transition between a light area and a real dark area as well creating a really really nice uh, sort of smooth blend and a subtle color transition as well something that's very pleasing on the eye so as you can see, like I say, just using my size zero brush, just trying to be as careful as possible to pick out all of the detail, um, trying to be as, as sort of, um, like I say, as careful as I can be. So from there, we're going to use dark green and deep green. And again, this is a 50-50 split. So this is just one splot of each paint. So just one blob of each. And this one now you can already see that vibrancy is really going to start to pop out. 
This color, uh, this deep green, is part of an intense range from AK Interactive, which means it has really bright pigmentation to it. So this is a really bright, vibrant color. So this is where we're going to build up that saturation. We're going to build up that vibrancy. And again, now we're going to be a little bit more specific and a little bit more uh, controlled where we're placing this. So again, we're going to paint this just across the top. And as you can see, using these very small lines, this very, very sharp, um, small edge to my size zero brush it gives us a lot more control to be able to build um, sort of textures and depth and things like that and we're going to try to be as careful as we can be while painting this to not get this paint in those recess points where the uh, the wash has dried and again as you can see by using the wash using a little bit of water we've got that depth and that uh, that sort of shade and that sort of color tone but it's not too extreme so it's not too dark that way then it gives us a really nice subtle transition between that sort of dark brown wash up through that dark green and up into this nice light vibrant green as well it's going to create this really lovely transition and this really nice smooth sort of um smooth sort of vibrancy this smooth sort of color transition and that's exactly what we're looking for so again we just painted down and around the the sort of vines and the the arms and just around uh, those sorts of um the, the, the bulbs and just I want to say hands but this thing doesn't have hands um, and again we're just going to do the same thing just around the knees and around certain parts where we think the light is catching just on the knees as you can see I'm purposefully avoiding certain areas so that it just builds vibrancy in certain stages and in certain places giving us this nice transition between light and dark once that bit's dry, we're just going to use that vibrant deep green then on its own. And again, we're just going to do the same thing. And we're just going to build up all of these uh, little textures and, and, and parts that are sticking out of the model, as you can see. And again, if you wanted to, you could dry brush this. That's absolutely fine. I'm not going to tell you which techniques are better and which ones aren't. Um, I just wanted to try to make this into a really interesting um, sort of painting and something that, that when it's done, we can look at and say, wow, we, we really went to town and really, really spent the time and made this look really, really cool. So this is kind of like when I say before about like, um, if you've got a model that has a lot of skin, Spending a lot of time getting the skin right uh, benefits you because that's the area of the model that you notice the most. So that's the area that people will see the most, will look at the most, and will stand out the most. So because this is a model that has a lot of green, we're going to spend a lot more time on the green, and that way we're going to get this really great, vibrant looking green, and it's going to be something that stands out and looks fantastic. So from there, we're going to pick up some of the details inside of the mouth. For that, we're going to use Citadel's Avalanche Sunset, one of my favorite colors of all time. Uh, this is a yellow that takes to the model in a really, really nice, even way. Um, and it also looks uh, really, really good. It's not too vibrant. It's a really good mid-tone yellow that you can build up from. So Avalanche Sunset is always a winner when you're painting yellow. For me, uh, it is a color that I think um, is unmatched. And what we're going to do, again, using our size zero brush and the very, very, very tip of the brush, as you can see, just trying to pick out uh, the detailed areas inside of the mouth. Now, this area and this part you've got to be very careful with because you can make a few mistakes. But don't worry too much because by using a little bit of water with your paint, it is something that you can always just water down and wash off before it dries and replace if you do make any mistakes so it's not the end of the world if you make a mistake it's something that you can fix nice and easily so don't worry too much but you can see where everything has dried down in that mouth those sort of wet blended mouth parts the sort of oranges reds everything like that has all really come together quite nicely now all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use a very, very light watered down uh, Fugan orange wash just to tie that yellow back into uh, the oranges and reds. So whereas I've painted this area, I don't want this to stand out too much. So I'm just going to put a little uh, small thin layer of this wash just to tie those colors together. And now we're going to do something completely different. For this, we're going to use two old brushes that are a little bit more worn out and a little bit broken. And we're going to use Hive Dweller Purple from uh, Army Painter Speed Paint. And what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, equal parts water and speed paint together. And with one brush, we're going to place um, 
the, uh, the the sort of speed paint just in a dab in motion and as you can see this is nice and thin so this isn't completely taking over the model or taking over those uh, tentacles just yet and we're going to dab this in first and while this is wet what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a a damp brush so using the second brush this one is going to be uh, damp so it's not wet uh, but it's just slightly damp and as you can see i'm just going to manipulate and move that paint around the area where the paint transitions from the green to purple now you will get excess paint on your brush so it's always worth using that uh, sort of as you could see I did with my finger just wiping the excess paint off of your brush and then continuing to sort of just drag that paint through to blend it through and you're gonna need to do this three or four times to get that vibrancy to really show through and this is how we sort of blend that purple through so as you can see I'm just dabbing this through and then just using the other brush just to sort of drag it through we're gonna do the exact same thing but this time we're gonna use an ink so I'm gonna use a Dalaroni and I'm gonna use a purple color and as you can see this purple is a very very vibrant sort of pinky purple color and there we go we're gonna do the same thing again so we're just gonna paint it first and then using the damp brush there you go you can see on this color we just tra uh, transition in that purple that light color through by using a damp brush just to drag and manipulate where we want that to be and by thinning this paint through like this that creates a smooth transition through from that dark deep purple to this really nice vibrant uh, purple just by dragging that through you're creating this really nice even um, sort of te texture which then becomes really pleasing on the eye it looks like it's something that's really complicated to do and it does take a little bit of practice but it actually is not that difficult and the reward you get for doing something so simple is fantastic it looks incredibly good at the end and this vine technique here using this hive dweller purple and then purple ink would look fantastic on things like uh, Nurgle uh, Marines or Nurgle sort of um, tentacles and things like that. It would create this really cool, sick sort of um, tentacle kind of color as well. The cool thing to remember with inks is when you place them on a model, they always look brighter to start with and then they tone down nice and evenly. Now what I'm going to do from there, uh, just because I want the transition between the light and dark from the top to bottom to be a little bit more extreme, I'm going to go back to my soft tone and I'm just going to place another layer of this just across the legs. So we're not painting across the top, this is just going across the legs and again the point of this is just to give that transition between the lighter area and that more vibrant colour across the top of the model and then the darker area just down and across the legs. I mean you could use a transition into brown if you wanted to looking at some of the original pictures and the original artwork some of the legs are more brown and a little bit darker uh, but i haven't gone for that i've gone to paint them all as green and there you go all in all that is our two ivies done these remind me so much of a little shop of horrors uh, the plant that likes to eat people these look really really great they're gonna look menacing and amazing on the board when you play and it's also really cool that you've got this really vibrant bright over the top sort of colorful monsters for your resident evil 2 board game as well not everything has to be dingy and grimy and grim uh, sometimes things can look really vibrant and still have a menacing sort of look to them as well I particularly love how those purple uh, tones have really come through so you'll have to let me know in the comments below what you think of that and all in all that is our ivies done they look great so let me know if this tutorial was good for you let me know if uh, you were able to learn some cool new techniques and what you think of the painting overall I always love to hear from you guys thank you so much for watching thank you for tuning in thank you for your positivity your comments your likes he shares everything i really appreciate everything that you guys put into the channel and i try to listen and i'm trying my best to keep up with everything that you guys ask for and i will be making loads and loads more videos in future so please my friends take care and i will see you guys in the next one